the first home I showed you, it was a disaster. I mean, there was like no walls, no foundation. There's no floor. Um, you know, I had no business walking in it. And you're like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, we can fix this up, right? You're like, Matt, you need to get out. You need to get in your car and you need to drive away right now. I'm like, but it's a mobile home. And it's like free. And you're like, get in your car, drive away. This is not <laughs> the home for you. And I was like, man, okay. So that's what that's what's relevant to me is uh, talking to people out there that are interested in getting to this world that, you know, this small little niche and saying, Hey, if you, you can do this, if you don't have any experience and really you don't have to be a real estate person, you don't have experience. You don't have to have handyman experience or contract experience or whatever you can do this. Uh, you can absolutely do this, this process. So yeah, let's do <laughs> Take this. 422. Right. <laughs> Uh, welcome back, everybody. This is the Mobile Home Investing Lessons special video podcast. I'm very happy to be joined by Matt. Thank you for uh, agreeing to uh, come on the microphone today and share some secrets and embarrass yourself a little bit. And uh, thank you for being here, Matt. Yeah, no, absolutely. This is uh, uh, it's so funny being finally being uh, uh, on this side of it and just being just being able to have this conversation. So it's, it's great. I think uh, we've been talking now for uh, a good year and a half, and um, it's great to, to, uh, to, see, to see your face, and, uh, um, but actually be a real-time connect. Um, but no, this is, this is awesome. This is a great, this is, man, this is a true honor to be talking to you. And uh, just, you know, um, just thank you so much for, uh, just thank you so much for getting to this point. Um, just, it's just a great, a great journey, an interesting journey. And uh, one that I'm glad that uh, we've been on together since we started uh, June of 2020. So thank you. June of 20, so a bit over a year. Yeah. And you're, you're welcome. I, uh, the, the time that you've spent busting your ass and, you know, overcoming so many obstacles. Um, yeah, you're here for a reason. So, I mean, it's, and thank you so much for being here because you have a, so much to, to give um, or if you want to give, but you have so much that you've done and so much that you've accomplished just in this past year. Um, if you would, for the folks listening, who are you and kind of, yeah. um, why should they listen to you? So, yeah, I, I guess I can start. Like I have, uh, zero real estate experience. Um, I've been in the corporate world for, um, the last, you know, eight or nine years, um, I am uh, in the in the military. I'm in the reserves, and I've been doing that since 20 uh, or 2008. Um, I'm still doing that. And um, but prior to that, I was in uh, I was in sales and pharmaceutical sales and stuff like that, and medical sales. And then um, uh, actually joined the military a little bit late. I was 31 when I went to to boot camp um, in 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 uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, which was quite interesting. Um, so going to sales to boot camp at 31 was uh, an interesting transition. So nowhere in there did real estate whatsoever. And, um, and then I got into logistics. Um, I got that from the army. Um, I got into the logistics, the corporate world and worked for a great company. And, uh, but just really wanted to, um, after doing that grind for a good while, wanted to, is there something else? Is there something else I can invest in? I'm investing so much time into something else. I want to invest that time into myself. And so what I've always interested me was to do is to work for yourself. Like, what could you do to work for yourself? And I never knew what that was. You know, I just, I knew the calling was there, but I just didn't know what it was. And then eventually got into, you know, real estate was just to seem like a natural fit. And any, anytime you read, um, it just seemed like, hey, real estate is the best uh, venue or the, the, the best uh, area to get into if you wanted to work for yourself. So naturally, I was like, okay, great. Yeah. And then everybody's flipping homes, right? You got you to flip homes. That's the best way to get into it. Um, and then, um, yeah, so let's how, how do you flip homes and all that good stuff? And then uh, eventually, it led me to I found you. And then um, instead of flipping homes, we're flipping, you know, or, or getting into the mobile home uh, space. And um, so, yeah, that's where that, that's where that, that's where that led me to there. So I have zero real estate experience. I have zero home experience uh, other than I'm a recent homeowner. Um, and so uh, zero, zero building experience. So uh, I've got logistics experience. I can get stuff from here to there, 
but other than that, I don't have any, I don't have any mobile home experience. I didn't have any prior experience to getting into this. But then um, eventually, and through some weird connection um, and, or through some weird thing, whatever, I found you. And then I started learning about mobile homes. And then all of a sudden I was like, this guy's crazy. I'm not going to get into all the mobile homes. I'm going to move on. And then uh, I just ended up having to listen more and then listen more. And then I started watching your YouTube videos. And then I was just, I was convinced this is, this is the place for somebody who doesn't have any real estate experience, doesn't have a whole, whole, a whole bunch of capital, but, um, you know, wants to put in some hard work and wants to, and wants to put in some sacrifice and wants to start working for themselves eventually. Um, and I thought that was the best, the best way to do. And thank, thank God I actually listened to myself because, you know, you have so many ideas. You're like, yeah, it's a great idea. Then you wake up the next morning. You're like, Hey, moron, that's a horrible idea. Don't do it. <laughs> this is like the one time I listened to myself. Well, actually that twice, uh, going into joining the army at 31 was the one time I listened to myself in the morning. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. But, um, the mobile home piece was the, the other one. And I'm so glad that I, uh, you know, reached out to you. Did you always have the desire to do something for yourself? Yeah, it was the desire to do something for myself, but uh, I actually hesitated telling my wife. I, you know, obviously oh. I, I tell her everything. I'm not going to go do something crazy or a new thing. And she's going to be like, what, what is, what's going on here? And not tell her. So I told her about the mobile home piece. I told her about, hey, this guy, John Pedro, she watched, I texted her one of your videos and literally she just texted back. She's like, yeah, sounds good. She's like, this, this is, looks pretty interesting. You should do it. And so I didn't even want to, I didn't want to, I'm like, yep, that's a, that's a green light. That's a yes for me. So I just, I took it and ran from there. Um, but then I liked, so after watching your videos, I am a kind of a more of a process person and where I like the steps to be, I like, I don't like the ambiguity, um, which comes, the ambiguity is going to come, especially when you go out there for the first time to a mobile home park. But I, I like the information that you put on your videos. Um, I like the whiteboarding. I'm a, I'm a big whiteboarding guy, right? And um, uh, you're like, hey, this is the steps that you have to take. These are the things that you need to do. And it broke it down by uh, finding parks, what to do in a park, driving through the park, talking to the park manager. Um, hey, you want to buy a home? This is the steps you want to buy a home. Okay, now you want to sell your home or rehab your home. And each one was a process and a step. And to me, I was like, okay, that part right there, that stuck to me because sometimes I think when you, or a lot of times when you're interested in something, you just get like a very, very little bit of information. And then you, then you, maybe you, you look into it and you're like, man, this is, I don't, I'm not armed or equipped with the right information to this. And I just thought that that was, um, especially when you're doing something like that, you're taking a, you are, you're taking a risk, right? But to me, it was, I felt like I was armed with the right information um, and uh, to get into this world. And then when you actually get into the world of this, of mobile homes and doing it, um, uh, yeah, there, it, it was a little scary driving through that park for the first time. Um, but the other one that I found was really awesome was, it's not just your information, but it was the other folks that are doing the business that have, uh, that have done your course as well. Um, I have made really, really good friends um, that I talk to a lot. Okay. And from the um, Facebook group or just bumping into each other? No, uh, Facebook group. Okay. Yeah. So there's the, uh, your Facebook group. And so I'd say, hey, my name is Matt from Nashville, blah, blah, blah. And they would say, hey, and then, you know, some people would reach out. So I've, met, I've talked to uh, about two or three of them on a cons consistent basis. And um, I never felt one time that anybody, uh, you know, wanted to steal or wanted to take, you know, all it was, was like, it just felt like that, uh, rising tides raise all ships type of mentality. And, you know, it was, uh, those conversations with those folks are, you don't feel like going out today, or you don't feel like looking at homes. You don't feel like, you know, I'm just having a lot of problems selling this home. You just, you're able to check in when I'm, when I check in with you, it's that positive, uh, reinforcement. When I check in with them, it's that same thing. It's like an extension of the group, you know? Um, so uh, I found that to be a huge benefit, especially for somebody like, again, I don't have, I didn't have a whole lot of experience going into it. I am really, really like glad that you say that. It makes me feel uber proud 
of the Facebook yeah. group and the people in there. And maybe it's, you know, people are people. So, I mean, I'm sure there's a load of scammy people in mobile as mobile home investors, but the people yeah. in our Facebook group, I don't know if it's just because we know the struggle or the price point, you know, to get in the group or, um, you know, we're, we're all taking action. So we know what it takes and we're doing one deal at a time and we're helping less for like, so it's just this, I feel like the group is people like us, yeah. like we, we want to help is. each other. We're down to earth. We're, anyway that's yeah. one of them uh you know one, one of the, the the guys i talk to a lot lives like 30 minutes from me so you know there is it's not a competition it is i mean it's just like you know sometimes you just get a, a text or a phone call and just says hey man how are you doing i'm checking in i want to make sure you're doing good and that there has helped me on my darkest days where i'm just like yeah i don't i'm like ah, i'm a failure i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> you know mm. and then um especially when you know <laughs> the point where i get to your first home you're selling your first home you haven't sold it in three months and then you realize that it's not what you think it is and you maybe you, you forgot something or this or that and you know you can tap into that those resources so it's not just about you know the course material it's not just about you um you've you've built a great a group there of folks and um and even the older folks who've been there for a long, good, good while, you know, man, they love, they love, Hey, you're dealing with this Yeah, Here's, here's some tidbits of information. Um, yeah. You're... So, and yeah, please, I'm sorry. Interrupt. No, no. And it was yeah. just, it's, I think it's that giving back too, because they all understand that initial struggle. And if you can get through that first couple of months, you know, it just, it, it gets a lot easier from there. But uh, even to this day, I, I always enjoy going to the Facebook group. And and getting that you know um, that weekly that weekly refill of positive energy from the group. Um, I'm really glad to hear that. That's not something that we've talked about much about the Facebook group. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you have humpback whales there. I do. Yeah, I don't know what's going on over here. Oh. It's like Star Trek Four Voyage Home. <laughs> I don't know if anybody. That is an obscure anybody. reference. Yeah. It is an obscure the reference. The fourth yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's the travel back in time. You sort of alluded maybe a couple minutes ago, it took you months to sell some properties yeah. um, or maybe at least one property. You know, you had your trials and tribulations. Uh, I, But I want to sort of mention that you are doing this now for all of the headaches and, and, and the hurdles and the BS that you've gone through. For the last two months, you've been doing this full time. This is your full time. Yeah. Yes. So uh, it, it's been absolutely insane. Um, <laughs> so ju in July, I actually ended up uh, uh, leaving the corporate world full time. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't. It was one of those things. It was very tough to do because I really, the, yeah, I love the people I worked with, and and I actually did have a passion for what I did. But the passion for being home uh, and working for myself and being with my wife over you know, overrid that, that piece. And so I had to leave that, you know, that piece of my life behind and uh, start a new journey. But um, that's why it was just, uh, it, it's been just an absolute crazy ride since I started way back, you know, in, in June of 2020. So when yeah. was that decision of, of full-time? Is it, okay, I'm making enough money now, or in order to do everything I want to do, I can't do both. Or did you go part-time and do both part-time for a while? Like just kind of curious of how that. Yeah. Moment. So, um, it just kind of ramped up to where it was like, it took me a while to sell my first home on payments. The in between there though, I sold, I had like a wholesale deal that was like five, it took like five or six days where it was just like somebody, I ended up getting a home through a, through a park manager who I had a really great relationship with. We, we like almost talk every day, just about anything, Star Trek four. And, um, and then, uh, she called me up and, um, after we had been talking for about two weeks, she called me up. She's like, Hey, I have a tenant. They just, they want to leave. They don't want to be in the park anymore. They want to be out of the state and they would like you to pay their, their back lot rent, which is like, you know, uh, it wasn't that much at all. I think it was like, you know, a thousand dollars or something. And they had, they owed some utilities, which was like a couple hundred bucks. Um, and then they'll just give you the home. And then I was like, uh, yeah, I'll be there. So the next day I ended up going, driving to the park, which was two hours away. And I just showed up home was like, oh my God. 
you're going to give this, I mean, you're going to give away this home for $1,500. I'm like, yeah, okay. And then I didn't have the capital to put into fixing the home, but I didn't need the capital into fixing the home. That was the crazy thing. And so that was the part that I didn't wrap my head around the first time was I spent too much money and time and effort on the first home way too much because you wanted everything to be perfect. Right. And I wanted like this awesome fortress of solitude, which I, that's, you know, didn't need to do. Um, so the second time, and that's how I fell into this. And then I put it on Facebook and I'm not, I'm not joking. Five days later is I'm driving back to meet the new buyer and I was able to sell it boom for cash right there. And then that happened. And then another wholesale deal happened. And then, um, then I got my, uh, uh, a business partner involved and um who happens to be my brother-in-law so that uh, was interesting but and then i got him involved into it as well and then we started selling those uh, i'm i'm really sorry john it's okay. um, i swear to god they're like the most even kill dogs and as soon as you know you're not paying attention to them for two seconds it's like hey we're gonna try to kill each other if you're cool <laughs> or you can pay attention to us kill each other or pay attention to us what, what, what do you, you want to do so anyway, um, and then that's when we got another home on payments and then we got, then we found a park and then we ended up getting with talking with some owners and um, they were interested in our model. And then, so we ended up partnering together. And so it just, uh, all of a sudden the opportunities for, you know, going out there and, and finding homes became very, very abundant. And all it was, was, um, and these were owners of, of a park. So, you know, they recognized, uh, they had the supply, they had the supply and we had the process. So we ended up partnering together. Hey there, John Fedro here recording this from the future. Well, not the future, but the future from when the original video that you were just watching was recorded. So to you, this is actually the past, but from the video you're watching, it is the future. I wanted to interrupt this video because I wanted to uh, explain what Matt is talking about with this partnership from the mobile home park. He just got started as a mobile home investor. He's investing in a few mobile homes, and then he bumps into a mobile home park owner that says, listen, I got a bunch of empty mobile homes. I got a bunch of empty spaces. I'm a mobile home park owner. You, Matt, seem to know the logistics of fixing the homes and filling the homes and finding the homes and moving the homes. And so why don't we team up together and partner? I'll put up the, the parks, you put up the home, you put up the repairs, uh, and we'll partner together, actually partner on the park. How awesome is that? Um, so it has been an amazingly fast way uh, for Matt and his brother to scale. Um, and we're going to talk more about that in this video podcast, but I wanted to uh, just sort of interrupt uh, to, to, to let you know that. And this is that something that, you know, people can accomplish. And I would say around the country, I am working with a couple of folks that have accomplished that. Um, but it takes the right ingredients as well as the right people um, and the right track record for that to happen. So anyway, uh, back to the original video. So I was able to do that. So I took that jump and we and I started doing it full time. So now we're involved in um, uh, working on multiple homes uh, inside of in, inside of two two or three parks, and and doing doing our model, putting those on, putting them on payments. So yeah, what did your brother-in-law bring to the table? What's his experience? Yeah. Does he come from that like? rehabbing world so he just has building experience so he he was a contractor before oh, and he cool. worked for himself and but he didn't have he always wanted to he that's why he got me onto the the uh flipping homes before or real estate because that's something he always wanted to get into he had a passion for because he felt like if he could get a you know a dilapidated home or a home that needed a lot of love he feels he still feels that he can go in there and make magic happen and he can. Oh my gosh! I mean, he has turned some some duds into some studs. Um, He's doing the work. Uh, so sometimes he he does he did at first, but then as we got so so busy so uh, so busy, now he he's got a couple of of folks out there that he's a couple teams. Yeah. And I don't know if you got the joke there. Some duds to studs because it's a twofer. Stud being very good looking, but also studs to a house. So throwing that out there. <laughs> If you have yeah. to point out the joke, it's a little less funny, but you're right. It is a little <laughs> less funny. But, Way uh, over my head. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's this one beer. I'll be here all week. Half I'll a be beer. Okay. 
you got too much to do. You're not going to be there. I know. You. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, before I quit, before I, uh, I want to ask you more mobile home stuff. What makes someone, or what was your thought? What did you, thank you for your service with the military and still actively. What, um, what made you want to uh, go back or go to the military at 31? I had, uh, I thought I had like a midlife crisis <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to, it was one of those things where, you know, what I was doing, um, I was in sales for like right out of college and made really good money and in, 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 I was in pharmaceutical sales hmm. and medical equipment sales, but I just felt that um, I just didn't feel fulfilled. And I was, I was like, man, it's just, I just didn't, I wanted to do more. I wanted to, to give back. Um, I wanted to feel like, you know, I put my imprint on the world, I guess, if you wanted to say, and just give huh. something and, uh, or, you know, and so all my family, all the, uh, if you go back, you know, they all went to, uh, before they went to college or if they went to college, they straight out of high school, they go to, to the military, all different branches. And, um, that wasn't me. I went to, I went to college and I was like, that is not me. That's, I am not that I want to make some money. And then, I just had a, I just had like an epiphany. I was like, this is not what I want to do. I need to, I need to go. And so I think that's right around the surge was happening. And um, it was, it was really, you know, still big in the news. And uh, the so surge? I was like, the sur uh, in Iraq, there was that big surge. And it was, it was in 2007, 2008 timeframe. And it was, it was, they were talking a lot about it in the news. And I was just like, you know, I need to, that's what I think I need to do. I was a calling I felt. And I just, I want to get, I want to, see if I'm not, if I'm too old, hopefully I wasn't to, to join the military. So I literally just walked into a recruiter's office and I said, yeah, I'm about to quit my job. I'd like to be a, an officer in the, in the military, in the army. And the guy was like, yeah, how old are you? And I was like 31. He's like, yeah, okay, cool. Let's sit down. And it was one of those things where everybody's like, dude, don't sign the paper without reading the contract. I was like, where's the contract? Do, 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 do. I'm signing the paper. Now. I'm like, yeah, when do I start? And uh, it was like uh, two months. I'm like, cool he's like when when's the last time you ran i'm like i don't know 10 years ago he's like yeah you probably want to start doing that um so yeah and that you you did go in what you thought i mean it was a, it, so far it's been a good experience just out of curiosity it's been a great experience so i didn't know anything about uh, uh the whole leadership piece and the it was oh, wow. a tearing down but a build you back up but the stories and the camaraderie and everything that goes back into it you, it is it has been absolutely one of the best decisions i've ever made to do. And it reminds me of a lot of getting into the mobile home space because there is nothing like home ownership. So when you're able to give, or when you're able to have that deal with somebody and they sign on the, the line and it's like, Hey, this is your home that you're giving back. I know it is. I know it, is, it doesn't seem like it, but the thing is, man, home, there's nothing like that home ownership. Right. And there's that feeling of it. The, I think that the, the world we live or the, the, you know, how we live today or our culture or whatever, or what's going on is there's a huge demand for homes, but it's just, they're very hard to find access to money and all that good stuff. So that's what we do. And we're a resource for folks to find homes. And I'll tell you what, not one time does anybody ever sign the dotted line where they're like, Hey, this is, hey, this is your home. Here's the key. And yeah, this is all right, cool. Take a picture and like, yay. Not one time they'll be like, this home, you know what I mean? It's like, this is the worst, you know, this is the only thing I could find. So thank you so much. It, you know, those conversations aren't like that. The conversation <laughs> is always, you know, th thank you. And I think that was one of those, it just, it just gives, it, it, it makes it all worthwhile. It makes the late night phone calls. It makes the driving around and you're like, why am I in this podunk town? Why am I going off the, like, hey, I know we're on vacation, but let's go take a left here, 30 miles. I want to go hit this mobile home park. And she's, you know, and she's like, I don't think so. Let's just go home. So, but um, all of that, all the phone calls and all the signs and all the other stuff that, hey, thank you um, that we're homeowners. It, there, man, there's nothing like it. But you had to do all of the work, all of the effort, all of the fake it yes. till you make it, all of the faith. Uh, you got to do all that in, in ample amounts. And then you got that, you know, you get the money reward, you get the profit, you get the, the help Absolutely. helping this person. The buyers, just as you know, you signed on the dotted line. I mean, a lot of our buyers do that as well. You try to go slow and explain the, you know, different forms and there before you can, you know, they're just, where do I sign? They're signing, yeah, where, hey, yeah. where do we sign? And I was just like, whoa, let's, let's, you know, let's, let's look at the, uh, let's look at these agreements here real quick. 
Um, but they look at you as a resource. And that's why, I mean, you know, that first time before I, I, we did that first home um, and I was like, okay, uh, what's the trust again? And what's the, what's the notary? How does the notary work? And I'm like, and you know, I must've called you like 17 times and you're like, okay, let's do this. You know, boom, boom, boom. Here's the paperwork. <laughs> and, um, and then you, and, you know, then I was like, okay. And then I saved all the templates. I put it in my Dropbox and now I have a good process going forward, but it was, it was just like, you know, these folks are looking to you to be, to know what you're doing. And finally, I think that first time or after we had talked so many times and I was a, it was like, okay, I'm doing this. We're, we're doing the deal. We're, we're meeting at the home and we're going to do this. Um, I finally felt like I felt like a good, I felt at peace. Like I was finally armed with everything I needed to do. But you're still learning new things. You're still yeah, every new, day. Yeah. yeah. What is your portfolio look like you have yeah yeah so um uh just roughly currently, yeah currently there's i think uh um three homes are done three homes that are consistently on on payments um done multiple wholesales but then we're working inside of two parks and i mean we've got like we're in the process of you know 25 plus homes that we're in the process of uh uh, rehabbing and then selling, selling on payments. Um, so that's like an everyday, that's an, uh, an everyday just conversation. Um, okay. Where's this home at? Okay, great. So, um, uh, brother-in-law does the, the rehab piece. So I'm always on, I'm like, Hey, what's going on here? What's going on this home? What's going on this home? What's going on this piece of land? And then I'm on the, then I do the marketing and I do the filling ho the homes and I do the, then I do our process, the, the least, the least to own paperwork and on the payments and stuff like that. So it's a great dynamic and it is, you know, uh, you're busy, but it's like, a, it's a fun, it's a fun, busy. It's a good, busy. It's a manageable, busy. Um, and it's just, you know, I, I am so glad I made that decision to go, to go full time and doing it. Will these two parks, it sounds like it just started a little bit ago and you haven't. Yeah. Okay. And then will these two parks, you said there's 25 homes. And your plan for most of those is fix them up, sell them on payments? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, and then, um, yeah, go ahead. You have a combination of, it sounds like you've done about three where they're in, you know, you're, they're make, making you payments. And correct. then you've done a, a, a number, five, six, seven, eight, uh, where you're just wholesale them. You made some cash. Mm -hmm. Now that you're in these two parks, are you going to like is it part of your role as well to keep looking for other parks to keep doing wholesales and like to keep bringing in the money or are you Correct. just okay yeah so it was it's it's a combination of things it's uh it's park operations it's 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 uh procurement of homes um and uh it's filling procurement of homes filling of the homes and making sure that the process is uh, that there's a good process in place to make sure that the ship is always sailing in the right direction. Um, so that's where the uh, and I'm sorry I forgot about that. And that's where um, so uh, everybody that I the the folks that I work with they uh, found our my skill was also in the operational piece with and I learned a lot about that from the military from the national the Army National Guard is I was able to bring that knowledge and that operational piece to the table and so plus with the information that i was uh that i had or the uh, resources that i had from learning uh everything from you um it was a that was a gap that these parks did not have they're like hey we've got the homes um we don't know what to do with them they're just there so it's like they and so and, uh, you know, so utilize, find somebody that can utilize that strength. And my strength was the operational piece and filling the homes and, and doing the lease zone payments. I brought my brother-in-law with me and he was the, 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 the maintenance uh, piece, which was a, which is a huge gap as well. Cause you got to keep these homes, you know, you gotta, you have to keep, uh, you gotta keep churning them, churning and burning. Right. Um, and so that's where that, that's where that, uh, that's where that piece comes in. So there's, there's a lot there. Um, and then on this, the, the next piece also is finding more, okay, finding more parks. And that's something I did not want to do. Uh, when I started this, I think you asked me what my goal was. And I was like, all I want to do is maybe one to two, uh, it would be great if I did one home a month. And then as I got into it, I saw how busy it was. I'd be like, 
okay, one home every two months. And then after I found a couple, I'm like, okay, maybe one to two homes a month. That's it. That's all I want to do. I'll get my full-time job. I'll have some homes on the side. Everything will be great. I can watch Star Trek at night still or early in the morning with coffee um, versus watching the news and being depressed all the time. So, you know, and life was going to be fine. And then all of a sudden life just said, no, you're going to do this full time. You're not going to do your job. You're going to, you're going to do this full time. So if you would have said that, uh, when we first started, it's like, Hey man, you don't know what you're going to find out there. You may find a lot more opportunity than you think. I mean, like, that's impossible. I'm going to do one to two homes and that's it. And you know, it would it'd be great if I had six to six to eight homes at the end of the year that were doing lease to own payments and then start next year and do the same thing and start well, next year, do the same thing. Certainly this park I mean, you wouldn't be in the position where you are if it wasn't for you and, and taking all the action and being as uh, you know honest as you are, truthful, proactive. There's a couple people in the group like yourself that are working with parks doing something similar. You are filling a very important role in improving the homes, cleaning the homes, reselling the homes, turning those non-performing lots into now money-making assets. And you're doing a lot of the work the park doesn't want to. If you which I don't want to just, I don't want to sit like anyone listening to this video, you know, might be thinking, oh, I can go, you know, work with the park and go partner with them or, you know, fix up their homes when you, you, you can, but there's so much that you're bringing to the table that you didn't mention. And, and it's honesty, it's the you know, yeah. truthfulness, which kind of sounds lame, but it's so important. You do know what you're talking yeah. about. You have the process. You, your brother is, our brother-in-law is there for the kind of the, the more the contracting handyman yeah. role but you're just you can have a full-time you can make a ton of money like 10 20 30 grand every month cash flow with those with you know 25 homes and then you go you that 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 same park owners they go to another park they they want to keep you busy they want to keep buying more parks so that yeah. you can keep doing this and making them a lot of money you're getting you're making a lot of money but they're even making more money off of you which is you know it's win-win it so, is, and the, it is a win-win. But I, you mentioned something that was so that's that is key to this business, and that's and that's trust. And uh, I did mention earlier about the Facebook group that uh, and some of the folks uh, that I've met in that in your coursework uh, that have taken your course that I've become that I trust. And um, I think in this world, that's the very 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 few people I found I can trust. Um, outside of our group because, and then the people that I work with are the, my uh, business partners I work with now, they're like, Hey, look, we, we've tried to do this before. And the biggest thing is we couldn't trust. We couldn't, we just couldn't trust anybody or it just, they just wouldn't work hard enough or it wasn't what they said they could do. But that big, the biggest one is trust. And so, um, and it's the same thing there. It's like, well, man, am I going to be able to trust these people? And that is where it's like, that is key because um, you are a resource and you, you do have to bring that trustworthiness. So if you're going to fail at something, um, you know, good news is not get better with time. So it's like, hey, if you're going to not get if you're not going to do what you're going to say you're going to do, that's OK. But you got to be open. You got to be honest. Um, and, uh, you know, that tr trustworthiness is such a big piece of this game. If you say that the home is, don't say the home is something that it's not. If you say as is, as is, is as is. And you've got to walk through these people with the home and point out everything that's jacked up because they're not, they're so excited. They just want to sign the dotted line. You're like, hey, that is, there is no AC in this home or there is no furnace in this home. By the way, it's October. I know it's hot now. In three months, it will not be hot. So do you understand what as is means? Um. So car alarms going out. This is the craziest thing. It's like this most is the most silent neighborhood. So yeah. anyway, so. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, ever since you moved in, it's not. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I can't hear the car alarm. That's not. That's not. Okay, that's not good. coming through. Um, you, yeah, that's. It, it just permeates everything you do. You know what you say, how you act, the the vibe that you're putting out, just that sort of authority yeah. and trust. Um, because, it's hard to get that across on like a podcast, you know, me and you have lived it, but it's tough to like, for someone that hasn't, yeah. you know, to articulate that. And as you just get burned one time, and then the next person that you come Once. in, you come in contact with, you I mean, you're, you're, I know we're doing the Star Trek thing here, that your shields are up. 
and you're like, dude, these, these shields are not coming down. You know what I'm saying? So they're, they're, I'm up. I'm like, I am super like, just, un, I don't trust anybody right now because I guess got burned in the past. And that's happened a lot. Um, and we've had, absolutely had to have to have had to work through that a couple of times where it's like, hey, I know you said you're going to fix the home. I know the home's going to be this. Or I know you said that we're going to, you're going to sell us the home here. But until you get the, the keys and until we sign the paperwork, you know, I, we're not going to believe you and, and, and this and that. And, and that's happened in this in this industry. Can you talk, maybe not in detail, but could you talk of like two or three or like two or three times that you were um, yet uh, taken advantage of or lied to or, uh, you know, who was that? Was it the seller? Was it the buyer? Was it the manager? Was it the contractor? You don't have to go into much detail, but just sort of yeah. examples for, for folks. So I think... Yeah, I think the biggest one is is the is the contracting piece is that's huge because like I said, I had zero. You know, people are like, oh yeah, I mean, you know how to you know you know how to like paint and stuff like that. No, <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, I mean, it's it's bad. Like, I mean, it's like really, really, really bad. You uh, wait. <laughs> Maybe you're selling yourself short. You have no, you no, like, no. You see Mr. Miyagi? You just the wax no, on? Yeah, yeah. No? Okay. I needed I needed Mr. Miyagi when I was younger. I, okay. I, I had Helen Keller as my teacher. <laughs> That's bad. Um, might want to delete that piece. But I, well, I it, think the time I don't is have gone. I don't have any experience of and I don't I should never have it you know, that's it. I just, I just, it's not part of my DNA that way. Bye-bye to me a long time ago. So, um, I had to trust, I had to put my trust and find the right people. And, you know, you, you find the first person and you were like, Hey Matt, you're going to reach out to 30 people on this Craigslist ad, right? You're gonna reach out to 30 handymen. You're going to talk to eight of them. Then you're going to roll it down to two and then you're going to end up with one. And then you're going to have to do the rinse and repeat a couple times. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first guy I talked to on the Craigslist ad, I'm like, hey, man, you're my guy. And then like, there's that little piece of me was like, dude, that's not what John said. And you're like, yeah, shut up, we'll be all right. And then you're like, <laughs> and then you're like, okay. And you're like, hey, man, how's the how's the home going? You're like, yeah, yeah, I'm not there. Well, why not? What are you what are you doing? What's going on? Yeah, I don't want to have anything to do with your home. Okay, well, it's been like seven days, and you could have told me that like six days ago so what's what's going on i thought we had a deal here and it's just that piece was finding somebody that you could trust with the 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 handyman and fixing the home and hey we can fix the home for x amount of dollars and then when it's time to you get time to the hey the, the home's supposed to be done in this amount of time you know you do the uh scope of work well hey you signed the scope of work and the scope of work said you're going to get it done in 11 days you know, today's day 14. And you're telling me it's like, you need X more. And what's, I mean, what's going on? That piece right there is, I mean, man, that that'll drive you up a wall. And that's the hardest part. Um, I thought finding homes, I thought, you know, raising capital or, or, or um, finding buy or finding buyers would be the hardest part. Um, I thought talking to park managers would be the hardest part. <laughs> I thought all that stuff would be the hardest part for me was finding somebody that you could trust to work on your home because that is that's your signature right that's your um it's out there now and there's gonna be somebody living in that home and if that home is not what it is that you say that it is man that, that's a reflection on you and trust me it, it will it, it will get out and so that's why um a lot of my time and resources and money hard you know save money that i did to, to do this uh has gone into that with that piece of the pie the contractors is that why well uh, so quick question did you pay any contractors up front or handy people and then they just burned you or did you wait like did you follow the steps to not pay anybody up front so yeah i, I didn't pay anybody i didn't pay anybody up front good but it was more or less the there was the, yeah I'm like thinking my previous self, but uh, I'm not, it wasn't like, I thought about it too. It was like, yeah, man, this guy seems like a good guy. I can give him like, you know, a certain amount, but I, I'm like, okay, no, 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 I'm not going to give anybody money, but I, th good. I think it was the final product or it was the agreed upon work that never seemed to follow the script of what we aligned on. With and that one that guy. Part, 
uh, the, the, yes, but it was it was a, it was actually a couple in different okay. in different areas. But you're you said two or three examples, and I just want to yeah. stick with that because that for me was the hardest the hardest piece. Um, yeah, um, it's an it's an ongoing thing. Like even right now, yeah, nineteen or. 19 years after getting started in this business, I'm still actively looking for handy people. And now it's yeah. some, it's in the same area of when I got started. And then it's also in this newer area of where I'm, you know, investing in. And it's like, we're always looking for more handyman. Well, not, not more handyman, but you're always, you have your eyes open and there's always people willing to, I don't want to paint it like cat, just put a negative, uh, like a wet blanket on handy people, but contractors yeah. and handymen, that's sort of the only people that are like guilty until proven innocent, maybe tenant yes. buyers too. Like if you are an investor and you don't have both eyes wide open 100% of the time now and in 20 years, when you're dealing with handy people and tenant buyers, you are going to get um, taken advantage of fooled lied to. There's so many of those folks that you if, if you're not a good goalie, it's a, maybe a bad analogy. But if you're not a good goalie, keeping all of the people you shouldn't work with out of your net, you are going to get taken advantage. It's like 100% guaranteed. So you it's almost and it, yeah. and it, it never ends. It's like even now 20 years later, I'm still having to watch and be very diligent. And it's not like stressful. It's just I, you know, trust but verify. Don't pay no, until no, you verify. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. You've oh. got to say, you have to trust but verify, verify everything. And it just, that's just the way, it, that's just the way it is. Is that why you mentioned, you had said this maybe 20 minutes ago. I don't know. I can't tell time right now. We don't have any time around me, but you said it a, a little while ago in the podcast where you started out and your goals were in your mind. All I want to do is one deal a month. Then I think you said you realized how like, challenging it was and you thought okay maybe one deal every two months and yes. then something changed and you're like oh screw it one like three deals a month so yeah. what was it that went from okay one deal a month now to two like what was it that obviously negatively impact was it the handyman like okay if i keep having these crappy handyman it's only i can't do a deal a month was that so mentality uh, what no, yeah, absolutely. I know what you, yeah, and I know the. Uh, so when I sold the first home on payments, it took the it took a good while to uh, find a, a a buyer. Now I found several buyers, but um, for various reasons, they would look at the home and say, "No, I don't want the home," or they would look at the home, everything's great, and then they never hear from it again. <laughs> and then it was like September, October time frame. And, you know, end of October, the, it started like just dying down. So, um, and that's that time of, it's, that's that time of year where it's just like, everybody just goes into hibernation mode and they just stop spending except, you know, Christmas time. And they're going to spend money on mobile homes. They're going to be spending money on, you know, uh, Star Trek four memorabilia. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, um, but anyway, so then, and then all of a sudden January kicks back in and you start and then it starts getting ticking back up. And so that's where that was, where it's like, well, maybe it's not going to be as quick as I thought it was. But then, like, while I was trying to sell that on payments, um, you know, I was like, well, hey, I actually did my first deal in like five days. I didn't even, I don't even, I didn't even tell you about it because it was so quick. I'm like, hey, man, I got, I got to talk to John. And then I just, I just, you know, I emailed you the thing saying, hey, I actually did my first thing. I did my first thing at wholesale, blah, blah, blah. And um, it was so quick. Uh, I'm like, this is insane. But that's where it was. It took me a couple of months to get my first one going and getting off the ground, doing the rehab and all of the piece. I was like, man, it's just taking way too long. I've invested way too much. Um, but then right in that crux of when I started to, okay, I found the right buyer, get them park approved and do the right process that's when that wholesale deal came. And right after that wholesale deal, deal came, another one came right after that. And then another home popped up in another park. And um, uh, that's where that it changed. So there was like a good uh, three month window there where it was just like, I went from like being very excited to being very stressed out to be very like, okay, now I need to accept the reality of this. And the reality is I work a full-time job. Maybe it's not gonna be one to two a month. Am I, am I gonna be okay with that? And I was okay with it. And then 
just it just got it then just got crazy and so you're you're like okay well why did it change it changed because the ground you're still doing stuff you don't have to people are like well you're not doing anything if you're not making money or if you're not selling a home or if you're not buying a home then you're not doing anything there is so much more to do there are there are going to new parks there is uh meeting uh park managers there's following up on phone calls there's people that you said hey let's connect sometime about mobile homes um and then you actually connect with them so there's there is a lot to do those are like you know planting seeds and then all of a sudden by doing that over the months it just they just started to sprout all at the same time and then it was just like okay then i'm starting to get really 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 busy um and then that's where that april of this year was just like okay i can't i can't do this anymore um one of these things has got to go away and i know which one i want to go away <laughs> And then that's where I had to make a conscious decision of, okay, I'm going to have to leave this, uh, you know, when I have to leave this, it was a great company and great people. I had a great uh, a manager who wasn't a manager, who was a leader, which I love. And, um, but that conscious decision was, Hey, let's, let's do this full time. And it just been, a, been a, you know, great decision. So was there something that you would have done differently in the beginning that you did not do? Whether, I mean, granted, you you only had like the knowledge yeah. that you had, but I guess, yeah, would have you done something different in hindsight or started something like started looking at something sooner than later or? Yeah, I think the only thing is, man, I just got, I just got into it. I just started, I went on, uh, I, did, I followed all the videos and I liked the little tidbits um, hey, go on in my MHI village and you can do this and you can find these homes and you can find these parks. And I Google all the parks. And then I went, I did, you know, 25 miles then I did the 50 miles. Then I did the 75 miles and I did all that. So, um, I'm actually glad I did all of that. I mean, those are, those are those planting those seeds. I spent way too much money on my first, on that first home. It was just, I just did. And I don't know why I did it. If I could, but the thing is that that one, my first one I sold on payments, um, I spent too much money for it. Uh, absolutely. And if I could, uh, it was a little, it was a little far away too. It was about two hours and 45 minutes away. Oh, so wow. whenever I wanted to do something or where there was an issue, you know, I'm like, wow, it's a, that's a, that's a tough, that's a tough cookie. You're going to be going why, all day to fix it. Why so far? Or how'd you find that in the first, in the first place? Or they find you? It, it, I think I found it via Facebook and uh -huh. I just reached out to somebody and I was just like, oh, that can't be that far away. It ended up being kind of far away. But the thing was, it was a good home and a, in a really great park. And, um, but after all the issues I had with it, I had some like, um, there's some like a uh, little bit of water damage. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and some other stuff like that, some siding stuff like that, you know, do you think um, you did too much? You didn't have to do nearly. I didn't, much. I didn't. Yeah, I did way too much. And I spent way too much money to do it or I, to purchase it. I could have done, made a better deal. I think, um, to purchase it. Well, I kind of and, feel bad about that. I don't remember the exact deal, but I mean, that's usually something that we try to me, avoid. No, you asked me. You said, uh, you're like, well, hey, how do you feel about this? And I was in, man, I was on cloud and I was just like, this is it. This is, I mean, I was, I had the tunnel vision on and you could have been, you could have been like, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe is it, could you have gotten a little bit lower? You, you did ask, you're like, well, hey, could you have gotten, could you have asked for a little bit lower? And I said, yes, I could have. <laughs> and you're like, okay, well, that's food for thought. Think about that the next time, because there are a lot of hidden costs and, and time and stuff like that that you don't know about that are going to come along the process. And I think, you know, I spent something, I probably could have spent half of what I spent for it. And then the same thing for the, the contracting piece, um, the time that it took to, to do that um, and all that good stuff. So that whole timeline, you're talking several months to do that deal, uh, cradle to grave was way too much, but you know, uh, the, you know, especially from the military, uh, in the corporate world, which I take, and it's a, a, a good mentor of mine said, man, your biggest takeaways, your best lessons learned are when you fail. And I don't consider that a failure because yeah, I did find a good tenant buyer and, and I, you know, month 13 or 14, I will be positive. Da, 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 right. Great. Um, 
but the process to get there was brutal. And I took so many lessons learned from that quote unquote initial failure. But that led me down to the next one where it's like, okay, this one's uh, that wholesale deal was like, do five days. And I'm like, boom, I'm going to do the exact opposite, except being a nice and charming person. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, and a, a trusting resource. Besides all that, I did the exact opposite and I sold it home in five days. And I was like, Hmm, okay, good. And it, so I took all the lessons learned from that success. And I kept that little, I kept all those little nuggets. So, so you have, I mean, those are two very opposite deals back to back, or not even while you're doing the first one, you have the yeah. second one come across. Um, was your goal, even though it's so far away, did you have a plan to fix it and then sell it a different way? But then I think, like you said, you got an offer that you couldn't refuse or? Yeah, it was just, it was too, it was, I uh, had, was, uh, the offer was to, um, the tenant wanted to leave and they weren't even selling the home. It was just, they wanted to, they wanted to be caught up on lot rent. Huh. And, um, and uh, that was it. They wanted. They just want, They wanted to leave the state, and they wanted to. But they also they wanted to have a good. Uh, you know, they didn't want to have that follow them. And so the park manager said, "Hey, I have a guy who I know, who I trust, and I think he'll buy your home for you. He'll take care of that, um, and he'll walk you through the whole process. He'll do all the paperwork." So she sold me the property manager, which I love her to death. Um, she uh, sold me on uh the tenant uh, or the the seller yeah. then the seller contacted me and was like hey can you i don't know what i'm doing can you just do this for me this is what i this is what i want to do i want to leave can you do all the rest and i said yes i can um and so um yeah um i can't remember your we, original question but <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> just those two well it always trails off into one way or the other but with yeah. those two homes you've got you got a good perspective on good. different yeah. opportunities and i mean clearly the path of least resistance of those two was the the, the wholesale quick turn correct um, that but you came straight from that uh, relationship piece that was that's such a huge piece is seeds. the relationship building yes yeah. Um, I would have never gotten that. I would, I would have never uh, gotten that phone call. I would have never known about it. Um, That's a good point. How scary would that have been if you would have just given up or if you would have been like, well, mobile home investing, that's what it is. I'm, you know, not for me or something. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, and that's where that, that relationship piece is so key. Be that trusted resource. Um, and there's been times where I'm like, hey, I can't do that deal. But... I know somebody that can, and I've called folks before and I've emailed them and I said, Hey, I can't do this. I just don't have the time or the bandwidth or the capital or whatever, for whatever reason, I can't do it. Can, do you, are you interested? And absolutely. So there's been, um, uh, you don't have to be a resource to be the guy that's going to buy it every time. And that'd be great, but you can also be a trusted resource of, well, Hey, I do know another guy and I trust him, or I know another girl and I trust them to, uh, to take care of you or whatever. So no, no, of course that's huge. I mean, you are, and that's, it's only been like a year. Imagine in another year. What you know, the things that's why I just like, sometimes I'm like, okay, what's the catch here that G didn't John <laughs> tell me about? He's like, Oh, by the way, I didn't tell you about year two. This happened. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. Wait for it. Yeah. Well, can, no, wait for it. Can, yeah. <laughs> that's probably what the people listening are saying. Like, all right, when's the next shoe going to drop? Can you, can you mention a, uh, do you have any, I, do you have any funny stories? Do you have any stories that kind of caught you off guard or, um, anything that surprised um, you or anything that I feel like when you and I talk, we're always laughing or a good yeah. morning, you know, it's like of different things that happen. There was this, you know, and I don't remember, but you know, there was the, um, it's so hard to, uh, it's so hard to think about like, because it's, it's a, it's such a daily grind. And the only way that I get through all that is, you know, it, it's, you do have to laugh about all of it and you do have to just be like, you know, you just gotta be, you just, you have to laugh and you've got to have a good sense of humor about it. And because it is, it's, it is a grind. Um, but it's a grind that if you put the right mental, uh, you know, mental attitude, the right motivation, um, the right processes in it, um, you know, follow the, follow the, follow the course, man, you, you will see the benefit to it. It may be three months, maybe six months, it may be 13 months, maybe two years, but 
you you will see it and uh you will absolutely see it um but like it's you know it's so as, as, as soon as we get off this call i'll be like oh man i should have told him about the time that i should have told him about the time this happened or that happened uh, oh okay it's a good yeah. time to wrap it up no this was I awesome know. we've been going for way longer than expected thank you so yeah, much sorry about that I get no are you kidding me sorry. i think if anyone learned like from this podcast like if matt can do it you know anyone can do it. absolutely and that's what i that's that the, the lesson? takeaway it's like seriously <laughs> man i am not uh, i am not a smart dude man holy cow there's some things man, i don't even know how i get through life like i look back at my 30s i'm 44 now I look in the 20s. I'm not going to talk about but, uh, <laughs> the 40s. It's more appropriate. And I just look and go back and go, dude, how did you get through? How did you, how are you alive, man? You're so stupid. <laughs> and um, you're smart enough anyway, to know your limitations. Yeah. He's smart. Hey, man's got to know his limitations. I know it's a horrible Clint Eastwood, but uh, man's got to know. Anyway, but I, I absolutely know my limitations. And, um, but anyway, yeah, that's what I want to take away. It's like, hey, Push past you those. can't do this. You can do this. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. I, you've, I mean, I, I was going to ask you if you had any advice for folks that were, you know, on the fence or getting started, but the last 10 minutes have really been a, you know, I, I don't want to paint the picture that this is an easy business no. or that it all falls into your lap or that it's, but, you know, the ingredients are there. You put them together. It wouldn't have worked if you, I mean, you're kind of the, the, that's a bad analogy you're like the baker or the the maestro i mean it's not going to happen without like the ingredients are there but you just got to do it and then keep doing yeah, it you, and yeah. keep doing it sorry and yeah and you, I, I hate saying grind because you know it's, that's a i don't you don't want to like turn people off no turn because, them off it's true but the also it's there is a piece to it where it's like you know i don't I don't like it when people are just like, hey, man, yeah, I want to want to make a quick buck and I want to get in here and get it out because I'm like, dude, you're just going to make my life harder because you're going to screw up and you're not going to be, uh, yeah. you know, you're going to end up just pissing somebody off and then I'm going to have to come back behind you and, and, and fix that. It's good because it's going to make us look good and stuff like that, but it's also going to be bad because there are times when people are like, hey, I've dealt with people like you before and you say one thing or you promise one thing and you don't deliver and I never hear from you again. So I'm going to save you the time and just tell you to go away. And you're like, okay, well, so when you say go away, do you mean like go away forever or can I come back? You're like, Oh, go away. All right. Now you're pulling out a gun. I'm going to leave. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, oh, this has been awesome. Time. Thank you so yeah. much, Matt, for hopping on this. And um, yeah, we're not going anywhere. And this is just uh yeah. So, yeah. Well, hey, well, I did. I did want to. Uh, I don't know if you remember about the. Uh, it was. Uh, do you remember the Star Trek uh, thing I sent you? You were wearing that uh, orange, that yellow. Hey, man, I'm telling you, well, you that was like. A, I'm like, dude, I think he's wearing a Star Trek shirt. And then Claire walked in, and she goes, "I thought you were watching that thing about mobile homes." And I was like, "I am." She's like, "Oh, why is he wearing a Star Trek shirt?" I'm like, "That. That's what I said." But it was like a, it was like the yellow like command shirt or something. But it wasn't. It was just like sweat. And I was like, man, if I ever meet this guy, I can't mm. wait to tell him. Like, dude, and I'm like, you know. And then I actually meet met you, and then we started working together. And then I sent you. I, I was worried. I was like, man, I hope this guy's not gonna be like, hey, dude, that's that was like my mom giving that sweater or something, oh. you know. And then I sent you like a I sent you a cutout with that picture yeah. of it. And I was like, I put the the Star Trek thing on it, and I was like, and we don't know each other that well. <laughs> And I was like, I was afraid you were going to come back and say, hey, man, uh, this isn't funny. This isn't funny. This is business. And don't send me that Ugh. stuff. And I was really, really worried. And then you came back and you're like, yes, that was so hilarious. I think you showed it to your your, your girlfriend or something. Yeah. Like that. I can't remember. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm like, thank God this guy's got a, uh, a good sense of humor. <laughs> it's going to be, yeah, it'll be a rough couple of, rough couple of months. Well, I invest in mobile homes. You have to have a sense of humor you when, you're, when you do this business. Yeah. Or we just yeah, we throw ourselves off a bridge. Um, yeah. Thank you. For, with that, a happy note. We'll have probably a good time to wrap yes. this up. Thank you so much. Seriously. Thank, and, yeah, thank you. But well, it's, um, wow. we'll thank both. And thank you, Don. For, they've been quiet for the last 30 minutes or so. Whatever you do. Yeah, I told them they they I told them I was gonna replace them with a pig. You put <laughs> they got better.
Keep me posted. Um, good. Any questions yep. or update? Anything that you anything that you'd like to add at the last minute, or just I mean, just yeah, this has no, been great. I think so. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, it's been a really a big joy. I mean, I hope everybody, I hope somebody that watch or listens to it or whatever, they they get some benefit out of out of this uh, out of this craziness. And that's it. You're not going to get um, everything that I said. Most of it was probably like, yeah, this is ridiculous. But if there's one or two things, and that's what it is, you you watch a video, and then you watch a succession of them. You're like, oh, I like that. Like from that. Oh, I like what he said from that. Oh gosh, yeah, I like what she did with this. That's awesome. Um, okay, she she sells all these for cash. That's awesome. Well, they do only you know uh, lease to own, blah blah blah. So that's what I hope is you know somebody will take something from this and say you know hey man that made an impact on me.